Looks to me like pH, calculating pH is going to be on the exam, right? Okay. So, let's take a look at a couple solutions here. One is ammonia. There's a bottle of ammonia. And each of these solutions, I want you to see if you can recognize, you know, like a, something that's going to make the solution acidic, basic, or maybe it'll even be neutral. So you want to look at it and see, is there a conjugate acid or is there a conjugate base there? So NH3, daisy. What is the chemical formula of the active ingredient in this jug of ammonia? What's ammonia? Ammonia is NH3. Ammonia is NH3. She's right. So, anybody, is this solution going to be acidic, basic, or neutral? If I took some of this and dumped it in water, the solution would be... Now, to help you out, you have your all these Ka tables, Kb tables. Well, I think it might guide you, too. This should be out. When you know for all homework questions and everything, there's probably a hint in there. Does it help you? NH3, it's in there somewhere. Basic, right? You dump some of this in water, because NH3 is a conjugate, you know, the conjugate base of well NH4 plus, but it's a base. How about? Well, let's not do table salt yet. Let's do. Aspirin. Who's had lab this week so far? Oh, okay, pretty much everybody. I take some aspirin, put it in water. It's going to be acidic, basic, or neutral. Remember what the active ingredient was in aspirin. I don't know if I can even spell it, but I can say it. Acetyl salicylic acid. So that's so it's going to be acidic, right? That's not something people with ulcers should be taking, right? Because it would be acidic. Rolate. Rolate. Before we think about the active ingredient, acidic, basic, or neutral, if you put some of those rolates in water, anybody. Think of what roll is supposed to do. It's supposed to, you, sorry, you got a gut ache. It's for heartburn. And what's in your gut? You got too much acid, so the Tums must react with that excess acid. So if you put Tums in water, the solution must be basic, because bases react with acids, right? So it must be basic. Okay. Does anybody know what the active ingredient is in? No. A lot of people take it for the calcium. Okay. But calcium carbonate. Now here's the question. There has to be a conjugate base there. There has to be. Otherwise the solution wouldn't be basic. Is it the calcium or is it the carbonate? What do you think? Calcium or is it carbonate? Which one can grab a hydrogen? The carbonate. The calcium can't because what's the charge on the calcium? Plus two. That can't grab an H. The carbonate. So the carbonate, that must be a conjugate what? Must be a conjugate base. And you could write it's conjugate acid if you want. You just add an H plus to it. Okay. So there's our, that's why the solution is basic. You've got one more. Table salt. What's the uh, chemical formula for table salt? NaCl. Table salt is NaCl. Do you recognize? Okay, so I'm going to put this in water. It'll be acidic, basic, or neutral. It has to be one of those three. In that formula NaCl, do you recognize a conjugate acid or a conjugate base? Which one? Or do you see CL minor? You see CL minor, right? You see CL minor. 
So it might be a logical guess to say that if I dump sodium chloride in water, the solution is going to be basic. That'd be a logical guess. But it's a trick question. Why is it a trick question? There's no argument. Cl minus is a base. It is a conjugate base. The problem is, what is this conjugate acid? HCl. Why is HCl so strong? Because its conjugate base, Cl minus, is so weak. It can't do anything. It's like a spectator ion. It's like sodium ion floating around. It's not going to do anything. So, yeah, it's a conjugate base. Cl minus is a conjugate base, but it doesn't do anything in water. So that means I dump table salt in water, the solution is going to be neutral. Right? Conjugate base, if you're going to guess something, you guess basic. But Cl minus is so weak, it's not going to do anything. So that's the kind of thing we're really going to get into today. And let's take a little closer look at it. So up to now, we've had these weak base solutions. Oh, what's the pH of this weak base solution? And we needed these KBs, and we wrote ice for the KB reaction. And, and it was all in this table. Right? So no, no problems there. Now, however, we have a second source of weak bases. And it's supposed to, we're supposed to be able to recognize them in this table of weak acids. So, Grace, if I circle one of these acids, I don't know, I'll just circle this thing. What conjugate base are you supposed to recognize? Because that's the conjugate acid. What's the conjugate base? O2 with a minus, right? Because you have to add a negative one to the charge. There's the conjugate base. You're supposed to recognize that. Oh, CHO2 minus is a conjugate base. I put that in water and it's going to be basic. Yeah. What's another conjugate base? Let's circle another one. Let's circle one that's a little more ugly. I'm going to circle this one, Crystal. What conjugate base are you supposed to be able to see from that? Oh, good. Oh, I just want to put these down here. PO4, negative 3. Perfect. Right? She added a negative 1 to the negative 2. She got a negative 3. Okay. So we're supposed to be able to look at all those conjugate acids and recognize, oh, that, this compound's a conjugate base. So really, for every conjugate acid, there's a conjugate base. We have a lot of conjugate bases then. It's just a new source. And you dump phosphate in water, it's going to be basic. What's the pH? You're going to have to do ice on it. Right? Write a KB reaction. Okay. Yes, Crystal? Okay. Yeah. Because you dump phosphate in water. You have to write the KB reaction. Right, so it's going to be phosphate plus water gives hydroxide and it's conjugate acid, which is HPO4 minus 2. Then you have to do ice. So you need a after a KB reaction because phosphate is a conjugate base. It's in the book. How do you get these KBs? They never, ever have a, if they have a table of KAs, they never have another column of KBs. They never do it. Why? Because KW was what times what? KA times K. I want you to calculate those KBs. If you're given a KA, you know the KB. If you're given a KB, I guess you know the KA. Okay. But the convention is for tables to give you all the KA. They like to write these conjugate acids all the time. Okay. Okay. So you know what's coming. The homework is going to be, what's the pH of this solution, right? And you have to do ice, write the KB reaction, all that. Now we know how to get the KBs, but how do you get these bloody things in solution in the first place? Phosphate. PO. You can't grab a bottle and it has PO4 negative 3 in it. Everything is neutral, right? All these bottles up here. Everything has neutral compounds. You can't grab something that's charged. You, you, you get that. The trick
trick is that solubility rule. You put these cations with anything, and it always completely dissolves. What were those cations? Do you remember? What solubility rule was it where, oh, you put, on the periodic table is the hint, which one? Group, group one, yeah. Lithium, sodium, potassium, right? So let's say it's sodium. What's the charge on sodium? According to the periodic table, it's plus one. So the formula for this compound, sodium phosphate, is really what? Na3PO4. So on that bottle is going to be Na3PO4. In the homework question, it's going to be Na3PO4. So you don't care about the sodium part. All you care about is the phosphate. Because the sodium doesn't do anything. Okay? So that's why how I think the homework questions are going to look confusing. What's the pH of 0.28 molar sodium phosphate? You don't look at this part. It's just phosphate. It's conjugate base. Okay. So let's mess around with a few of these. All I want to know is if you make this solution, Kathleen, to be acidic, basic, or neutral. Reaction that controls the pH. Sodium ionide. It's basic. Does everybody agree? If she says basic, that means she sees a conjugate base. And the conjugate base, is, it isn't a conjugate base of one of the what acids? Strong acids, right? Okay, so she sees CN minus. What's the conjugate acid of CN minus? HCN, is that on the list of strong acids? If you're not, heck, you know what? You got this. You got the tables of all these KAs for weak acids. Just look and see if what's on there. If what, looking for what acid? H, HCN. Is HCN on there? Yeah. So if you're not sure all the strong acids, look here, HCN's on there, so that means she's right, that must be a conjugate base. It's got to be basic, she's right. Okay, so they, can, they call this the hydrolysis reaction, or that controls the pH. Same thing. Eric, what reaction would we write then? It's going to be a Ka or a Kb reaction. If Cn minus is the conjugate base, solution is going to be basic. We better write a Kb reaction, right? So what Kb reaction should we write then, Sochi? What's the conjugate base? Cn minus plus. H2O goes to hydroxide and its conjugate acid. Good. Okay. Let's try the next one. Jessica, we've got 0.18 molar lithium hypochlorite. Would you say that solution is acidic, basic, or neutral? She says basic. If she says basic, that means that what acid had better be on this table? What acid? H O C L. She's right. Basic. So what reaction, Valerie, are we going to write then? It's going to control, control the pH. OCl with a minus plus H2O, OH negative plus HOCl. 
Here's a question for you, Juan. How come we can leave out the lithium? Well, it'll be over here, and it'll be over here, but it's just going to cancel. Yeah, plus one, but it's just going to cancel. It's on both sides. Call it a spectator ion. All those group one metals are always spectator ions. They never do anything. Okay. Except you can put them with compounds to make, right, and dry it out and make solids. Okay. We have C5, 0.8 molar daisy, C5H5N. Could that solution be acidic, basic, or neutral? Basic. She must have seen it where? In that table of the weak bases. She's right. Basic. She saw it in that table of weak bases. So, Grace, what reaction, what hydrolysis reaction can we write then? What's the reaction that's going to control the pH? C5H5N. Perfect. The KB reaction. Give OH negative. Yeah. With a plus. Good. Kathleen, we've got 0.15 molar HF. Acidic, basic, or neutral? Acidic. Now, before Erica, you go and write a Ka reaction. She's right, acidic. You have to write a Ka reaction. Before you write a Ka reaction, it could be a trick. Because I'm trying to confuse you, by the way. Is HF, because you can't write a Ka reaction if it's a strong acid. There is no Ka. It breaks up 100%. Concentration of H plus is 0.15. You're done. There's nothing to do. Is there, such, is there a Ka reaction to write? Yeah. I mean, I don't even think we need to memorize that little strong acid. You just look at this table every time. And HF is in there. Right? So, Erica, what reaction would you write then? Yeah. H plus, gives, HF gives H plus, HF minus. Perfect. Okay. Sochi, we've got 0.8 molar KCl. Acidic, basic, or neutral? Neutral. She, right? Because the potassium is not going to do anything. Cl minus is the conjugate base of a strong acid, hydrochloric acid. Neutral. She caught it. I don't think she's going to catch that. Jessica, good job. How about 0.1 molar sodium perchlorate? Acidic, basic, or neutral? Acidic? So that means you have to see a conjugate acid in there. Does anybody see it? Does anyone see a conjugate base or a conjugate acid? CO4 minus, that's a conjugate. CO4 minus, that's a conjugate base, right? There's no H even there. Because since we're talking about conjugate, basic or neutral? The conjugate base. Makes sense to write basic. It's neutral because yeah. HClO4 is not on the table. Right. HClO4 is a strong acid, perchloric acid. It should be neutral, too. You just kind of got to be careful with these questions. They're going to throw some in there like that. Okay. Maybe, maybe this will help. Because if you... If you were going to write a reaction, 
you'd have to write the K-what reaction. Because perchlorate, CO4 minus is a conjugate base. So you have to write a KB reaction. The KB reaction, what you'd write is this, right? Plus water gives hydroxide plus HClO4. So do you see what's wrong? You can never form a strong acid. They don't form. All they do is break apart. You can't, it's impossible to form it. That's why this doesn't work. CLO4 minus is so weak, there's no argument that it's a conjugate base. It's definitely a conjugate base. But it's so weak, it can't react with water. It can't do it. So that's why it's neutral. Okay. Let's try a step further. Let's write the hydrolysis reaction, if there is one, and determine a numerical value for its equilibrium constant. What's the KB. We have 0.18 molar sodium fluoride one. Is there a hydrolysis reaction? Is it, what's the reaction that's going to control the pH if there is one? What do you think? See the sodium. Do you see a conjugate acid or a conjugate base up there? Anybody help them out? But HF is a conjugate acid, but it's not up there. All we don't have HF. All we have is F minus. Right? So all we have is F minus. Is HF in the table? Yeah. So that means we have to write a K, KB reaction because HF isn't up there. It's only the it's conjugate base. You have to write a KB reaction. So Daisy, what KB reaction would you write? F minus plus H2O, OH minus plus HF. Yeah, conjugate acid. Okay. And if they wanted pH, we'd have to do ice and all that stuff. But they don't. They just want to know a numerical value for its equilibrium constant. So Grace, its equilibrium constant is KB. How are you going to get it? Well, it would be nice if they had a KB over there, but they don't. Yeah, it's, it's an equation that I think will be on the top of all the quizzes there since they give you all the equations. KW is KA times KB. Crystal, what was KW again? One point oh times ten negative fourteen. Okay. What do we well KB is what we're gonna solve for, but what do we plug in for KA? Kathleen, what are you gonna plug in for KA? Oh, she saw it. Did you hear? Those guys, the Ka for HF, 6.8 times 10 to the negative 4. Now, since we're messing around with exponents, I'd make sure you know how to do your calc use your calculator, right? Try it here. One, ah, one times 10 to the 14 negative. Divide that by 6.8 times 10 to the 4 negative. 1.47 times 10 to the negative 11. That'd be a nice question to do ice on, right? Because we can drop the x's. Yeah. Okay, we have 0.05 molar KNO2. Erica? Is there a hydrolysis reaction we can write? Is there an equilibrium we can write? Yeah. I mean, is it going to be a Ka or a Kb reaction? Kb. And she recognizes the NO2, so she must realize HNO2 is in the table, so, or HNO2 is not a strong acid, however you want to think about it. 
What KB reaction should you write then, Sochi? NO2, oh, I've changed colors. NO2 minus plus H2O minus and HNO2. Good. So we need, Jessica, a KA or a KB for this. What type of reaction did we just write? KB, because we just, it's a base reaction. All right. So you need the KB. So again, KW is KA times KB. KW is 1 times 10 to the negative 14. KA. Valerie, you see what KA I'm supposed to be looking up here? Yeah, this is where she got it. 4.5 times 10 to the negative 4. So about 2.22 times 10 to the negative 11. Looks like we're going to be dropping a lot of X's when we get to that far. That'd be nice. Okay. Write the hydrolysis reaction and its corresponding KB expression for ammonia when placed in water. So Juan, what hydrolysis reaction would you write there? And H3 Yep, keep going. Yeah. With a plus. Yeah, I can add a, have to add a plus one to the charge. And they want to know, Daisy, the KB expression. That. Exactly. It's just products over reactants. They don't even, they're not even asking for numbers. So that's going to be Grace, product over reactants. It would be in brackets, yeah. Yeah, leaving out water. All right, we're already dropping our subscripts, but. There we go, full-blown problem. They want us to find the hydroxide ion concentration and the pH of 0.58 molar NaF. Seems like it's an equilibrium problem. Full-blown ice. We need a react. What reaction are you gonna write? F plus H2O gives OH negative. See how the Na kind of screws stuff up? So I would just leave the spectator ions out, right? Otherwise, what do you do with it? I guess you could write, you know, write it over there and just cancel them out, but. I think it's easier just to leave them out. Okay. Erica, what would you do next then? Yeah. Oh, I forgot this part. The point fifty eight for the fluoride. Everywhere else, dashes. For the water, dashes. Right. The change row, what do we do for that? Sochi, you remember? Yeah. Good. So we're going to end up with 0.58 minus x. 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 Jessica, we're after the hydroxide ion concentration and the pH. 
In our ice table, what's the hydroxide ion concentration going to be? Yeah, it's OH. All right, what is it going to be? Where are you going to look to get your answer? Hydroxide ion concentration is just the table. Anybody help her? It's just X. So that's what we're after is the X. Once you get the X, you got your answer. Well, you're halfway there. They want pH too. But. Valerie, how are we going to get these X's? The next step. Okay, x, she's writing x squared over 0.58 minus x. Now that equals Ka or Kb? That equals Kb. But we got to find the Kb. Okay, so let's get Juan to help us out there. Juan, how are you going to find the Kb? Yeah, F is the base. We look at the table and see if we can find an F minus, but good luck. It's not there. Good, right? I like how he did it because he covered both bases. First, he's just looking to see if you could find F minus, right? The conjugate base. You can't, so that means you got to calculate it. KW is KA times KB. Exactly. So 1 times 10 to the negative 14 equals... Ka, Daisy, what Ka are we going to be plugging in there? Yeah, HF. She says 6.8 times 10 to the negative 4 times my Kb. So that is how I'm going to get my Kb. 1 times 10 to the 14 negative divided by 6.8 times 10 to the negative 4. 1.47 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, so that means 1 times 10 to the negative 11 is x squared over 0.58 minus x. Grace, what would you do now? Drop the x. Great. Multiply both sides by 0.58. Take the square. I got about 2.92 times 10 to the negative 6. Okay. So that means my hydroxide ion concentration must be yeah, 2.92 times 10. Yeah, and have a big M on it for units. Not pH, though, Crystal. How are you going to get that? Okay, you hear what she's I'm going to write the equation she's saying. She wants to find pOH. I like this way, too, because I think it's faster. But she's finding pOH. Then she's going to do what? Subtract it from 14, right? Because 14H plus pOH. And since it's in your calculator already, right, it's pretty easy to find pOH. You get... 5.53 for pOH. Yeah? Oh, because Grace saw she was only looking at one thing. You dropped the X because of that number right there. Yeah, yeah. Negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, any of those really small numbers. You can always drop those X's. So pOH is 5.53. pH must be about 8.47. OK. 
Okay. So let's let's not do this next one. Let's just write the or describe the reaction you're going to have to write. Find the hydroxide and pH of an aqueous solution of 0.77 molar sodium. I don't know what the heck that is. OCN. Are you going to write a Ka or a Kb reaction? Kb reaction, right? So it's going to be what? What's going to be your Kb reaction? Let's just write that. I think that's the hardest part. OCN, technically with a minus plus H2O gives us OH minus and HOCN. Perfect. And then you're going to do ice on it and you have to calculate the KB, the KB reaction. High score for the last exam was Grace. Congratulations, young lady. Let me get out the exams and all that stuff. There's grade sheets in here, too. Check those out. Remember, if you go to the speaker, make sure I see you so I can give you some extra credit. <laughs>